Ladakh. The Trans Himalayan region of India is one of the highest, harshest, driest, and coldest inhabited areas in the world. But it is also one of the most beautiful. This land is like poetry written on earth. All this combined with its amazing cultural heritage and its eternally happy and warm people make this land stand out from the rest. Ladakh is also the cradle of Dhamma and the finest example of the living Buddhist heritage in India. Its ancient gompas have been ceaselessly reverberating with the teachings of the Holy Buddha for centuries down the line. Buddhist chanting undertaken by the monks for the well-being of the people and for world peace was included in the list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity by the UNESCO in 2012. This is the spiritual land of karma and living heritage wherein monks and common people are striving alongside for preservation and dissemination of Buddha's teachings. An embodiment of this living heritage is Most Venerable Lama Lobzang, a remarkable monk who has lived his life in selfless service to the humanity at large. My belief is that the one who has given the Lama Lobzang to the Mahapurishan, the Lama Lobzang Ji, who has given the Lama Lobzang in the village of the family, in the Gau family, the contribution of their not only for Ladakh, but for the whole world, but for the international level, the contribution of their name will always remain in the I look at uh, Venerable Lama Lobzang as a person who is completely merged with the mountains, rivers and its people. He has become an icon, a symbol for Ladakh. You remember Ladakh, you remember Lamaji. The teachings and values given by the Buddha are result-oriented. Lama Lobzang understood and implemented these and achieved big results. His Dhamma activities combined with his most noteworthy contributions for living heritage and his philanthropic work have converted a little monk into a living legend. कुछ सालों से लामा जी ने हेल्थ के बारे में कंप्लीटली अटेंशन दिया गया है और ले में में हर साल स्पोर्ट स्पेशल डॉक्टर लग के लोगों के अंतरित में दिया रहा है और इस तरह से करगिल में भी करने किया किया गया है और करते जा रहा है उससे यहाँ के गरीब तबकों को बहुत फायदा हुआ है जो जिन लोगों को क्षम it is one of the most memorable experience of my career till today. We were going there regularly doing OPD, advising the patient. Then for the, the patient, which those who need surgery, they were coming to AIMS. Uh, in 2013, we decided we will operate over there and uh, credit goes to Lamaji. Lamaji asked us, can we do it at Leh Ladakh? So it was a really tough uh, decision, tough task doing Leh Ladakh high-tech surgery which is confined to only metropolitan cities and few centers.
Since then we have done 112 joint replacement over there. Out of 112, 102 joint replacement, they are total knee replacement, mainly knee replacement because knee problem, osteoarthritis or even uh, inflammatory arthritis of knee is very common over there. Ashoka Mission, the organization run by Lama Lobzang in Delhi, has been tirelessly working for propagation and promotion of Buddhism over the decades. Healthcare for the poor and needy is one of the key focus areas of Ashoka Mission, under which the free medical camps at Leh and Kargil are being organized with the support of super specialist doctors from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, belonging to different medical disciplines. Lamaji Harsal, was a professor, but a doctor, could lay a key, मतलब गांव के लोगों के लिए ट्रीटमेंट यहां ले में फ्री में करते हैं सर तो मैं समझता हूं लमा जी का हमारे लद्दाख के लिए लद्दाख के करगिल के लिए सब के लिए बहुत बहुत वो हमारे दोस्त के शुक्रगुजार है सर अ जर्नी टू एक्सप्लोर एंड टेल द टाइमलेस एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंस्पायरिंग स्टोरीज लेड अस टू विलेज शनम नियर ले Lama Lobzang showed us his parental home where he was born in 1931 and spent 8 to 10 years of his childhood. But how he became a monk from an ordinary boy is as unique and inspiring as his whole life has been. When I was one or two years old, I got sick. That is what I was told. There was no hope of surviving. So then those days there was no medical facility or anything. So my parents took me to the monastery and offered me to the monastery and promised if this child survived, he will become a monk and he will serve for the Buddhism. That is why I became a monk. And when I saw myself, I saw as a Lama. Everybody calls me Lama Lama. My dress is changed, my hair is shaved, and uh, everybody uh, uh, called me Lama. Lama Lobzang was offered in the service of the Dhamma, following rituals similar to those in the case of this child. On reaching the permissible age, he joined the monastic life at Sankar Gompa and then remained in the service of his Guruji, a revered saint scholar of Ladakh. Lama Lobzang spent the major portion of his early monastic life in this meditation hut. He volunteered to undertake an arduous trek along with us to reach this holy place nestled in the mountains. He was full of nostalgia coming here. Those were the formative years of learning and imbibing the ethos of Buddhism which laid a strong foundation for the young novice. Guru Ji, you have to meditation. You have to do meditation. You have to do food for them. You have to do all the things. Then you have to do all the things that you have to do. Then you have to do all the things that you have to do. Then you have to do all the things that you have to do. Then you have to do all the things that you have to do. Then you have to do all the things that you have to do. Then you have to do all the things on occasions, the young monk would spend hours thinking and trying to find the real purpose of his life. Thus, started the thought process from within to without and beyond in his young mind. Identifying the potential in the young monk, the 19th Bakula Rinpoche, the tallest spiritual, social and political personality of Ladakh ever sent him for taking formal education to Sarnath near Varanasi in 1951. It is important to understand that Ladakh of that period was totally cut off from the rest of the world. It had no roads, no vehicles, no hospitals, no marketplaces, no modern facilities and only monastic education. Therefore, before going to Sarnath, Lama Lobzang had no exposure to the outside world whatsoever. We reached Sarnath 
to trace the amazing story of Lama Lubzang further. Here we identified and met his tutor who shared a good relationship with him and taught him for a long time then. Lama Lubzang और Sarnath was a turning point in the life of Lama Lobzang. Lord Buddha had started teaching his Dhamma from here, and Lama Lobzang started his Dhamma life from here. In May 1951, he went to Tibet for higher ordination. उस जमाने में यह होता था कि जो लामा लोग हैं अगर वो तिब्बत नहीं जाएगा तो वो लामा की बराबरी गिनती में नहीं आता था तो तिब्बत जाके आना अनिवार्य होता था तो इसलिए मैं उसी बीच में जो तीन महीने का छुट्टी है उस छुट्टी को लेकर के बस वहां से तिब्बत चले गए उस जमाने में बहुत पहले तिब्बत में भी कुछ नहीं है रास्ता नहीं है कोई मॉडर्न फैसिलिटीज कुछ भी नहीं है तो हम लोग तिब्बत चले गया पांच छह लोग हम लोग साथ मिले थे तिब्बत जाके वहां भिक्षु बन के ऑर्डिनेशन लेके पूरा तिब्बत काफी हद तक दसपुंग मोनेस्ट्री गलदन मोनेस्ट्री सेरा मोनेस्ट्री उसे इसे समियाज मोनेस्ट्री इस तरह के बहुत से मोनेस्ट्रियों को देख करके पांच महीना मुझे लगा टोटल पैदल चलने का ही इज द ओनली लिविंग मंक इन इंडिया एट द मोमेंट हु participated in the Chhatta Sangayana, the sixth Buddhist council which was held in Myanmar in Yangon in 19, between 1954 to 1956. At Sarnath, this great monk was awakened to his purpose and mission in life. He not only studied here in this institution run by the Mahabodhi Society, but also contributed to a large number of youngsters getting formal education here. Lama Ji ke saath jo mera personal contact hua, wo late 1950s mein hua tha. Jabki Kushok Bakula Ji ne Ladakh se kuch bachchon ko unhone chuna aur unko Sarnath Varanasi mein adhyan ke liye bhejne ka unhone ek silsila shuru kiya. Aur isko karne ke liye unhone Lama Lobzang Ji ko chuna. तो मैं भी उनमें से एक था महाबोधि एक माध्यमिक हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल इंटरमीडिएट स्कूल कहा जाता था उस समय हम सारनाथ में था वहाँ पर हमें दाखिल कराया गया और जो सिस्टम के तहत जो शिक्षा वहाँ पर दी जाती थी वो तो देता रहा उसके अलावा लामा जी ने हम लोगों को जो जितने भी बच्चे थे उनमें उस पवित्र बौद्ध धर्म के उस पवित्र स्थान में धर्म के बारे में और धर्म को किस तरह से हमें उस पर अनुसरण करना चाहिए उसको किस तरह से हमें बढ़ावा देना चाहिए उसके बारे में पूरा शिक्षा दिया और यही कारण है जितने भी बच्चे वाराणसी में लामा जी के संरक्ष में पढ़ रहे थे वो अपने जीवन में बहुत कुछ करके आए उन्होंने संरक्ष में कृषि में चले गए जब कुछ बगोले जी मिनिस्टर था तो मैं उनका ऑफिशियल प्राइवेट सेक्रेटरी बना तो उसके बाद फिर वो सारा हो गया फिर लद्दाख बौद्ध बिहार बना लद्दाख बौद्ध बिहार के लिए जब पंडित जय नेहरू के पास हम लोग अप्लीकेशन लेके गया कुछ और बकोली जब दोनों उन पंडित जी को ये कहा था कि वो लद्दाख के लोग जब दिल्ली पहुंचते हैं तो कहीं भी उनके लिए ठहरने के लिए कोई जगह नहीं है तो पंडित जी ने फौरन उसी समय एक्शन लिया कुछ दिनों के अंदर ये काम करना शुरू हो गया तो जब लद्दाख बोलकर कंस्ट्रक्शन चल रहा था हमने बीच बीच में आ करके देखते थे मेरे ही देख रेख में सारा लद्दाख बोध बिहार का कंस्ट्रक्शन वगैरह कम्प्लीट हुआ जब लादा बुद्ध बन के तैयार हो गया तो पंडित जी खुद आए देखने के लिए कैसे बना तो उन्होंने उसको इनोग्रेट किया जब इनोग्रेशन हो गया तो कुछ बकोली जी ने कहा तुम दिल्ली जाओ लदाख बुद्ध बिहार का सेक्रेटरी इंचार्ज बना तो कुछ बकोली जी उसकी प्रेसिडेंट था मैं सेक्रेटरी इंचार्ज था द विजनरी बकुलर एंड पोचे इन दोल क्रूसेडर ऑफ बुद्धिज्म इन इंडिया 
he not only spotted the talent in Lama Lobzang, but also nurtured him to shoulder big responsibilities. At Delhi, the young Lama started putting the Dhamma into practice. In consonance with the vision of the great Bakula Rinpoche, the first and foremost service to the humanity undertaken was in the field of education. He has taken so many young children from Ladakh and started a school called Ladakh Institute of Higher Studies, where he has brought students from children from all the Himalayan region, including Sikkim, Kinnor, Himachal and Ladakh also. And then later that school became uh, Vishesh Kendra Vidyalaya because all the children from Himalayan region are, being, are brought to Delhi and, and given some scholarship also where they can sustain their, you know, the fees of hostel fees and school fees also. So there all the students, they studied in Delhi. I was also a student, uh, one of the students who went to Delhi and joined th that school. He remained a member of the SCST Commission for a record time from early 80s to 2007. With his unique and compassionate approach, he tirelessly worked for the upliftment of underprivileged and downtrodden sections of the society, spread over a huge geographical area. इस गांव में जाना इस गांव में जाना घूमते घूमते घूम 21 दिन में मैं लखनऊ पहुंचा तो उसमें मेन काम यह था कि गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया के तरफ से यह सोशल कास्ट ट्रैक के लिए जो फैसिलिटीज उन्होंने दे रहे हैं वो डायरेक्टली उन उन लोगों तक पहुंचता है कि नहीं पहुंचता है देखना था सारे तो शाम को जहां को पहुंचते वहां पर मीटिंग करते सब लोग से पूछते हैं एप्लीकेशन कमीशन में लाया कमीशन वालों को दो तीन महीना लगा उसको छांट के उसमें से ये निकालना है कि लोग क्या लिखता है क्या किस तरह करता है तो ये भी एक कमीशन के लिए एक बहुत बड़ा इंफॉर्मेशन था कि लोग क्या चाहते हैं लोगों को कहां तक उनको फैसिलिटीज मिल रहा है कि नहीं मिल रहा है तो फिर मैं लद्दाख गया कमीशन के तरफ से वहां पर मैंने रिपोर्ट तैयार किया लद्दाख के लोगों से करगिल के लोगों से मिलकर कितने ट्रैवल अलग-अलग किस्म के ट्रैवल सबके रिपोर्ट तैयार करके मैंने सबमिट किया फिर उसके बाद लद्दाख पे शिविर टाइप बन गया अभी लद्दाख शिविर टाइप है his connection with the teachings of the Buddha is manifold because he had been a sort of an embodiment of the teaching of living Buddhist heritage in the, in the promotion of uh, engaged Buddhism. This is something which is unique in Lamaji. He started with some small but important steps for revitalization of the Dhamma in the land of its birth. The new Buddhists, the Ambedkarai Buddhists, they all took care of them and they took care of the office 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 and they took care of the गांव गांव पैदल घूमते रहे पीले कपड़ा पहन करके बुद्धांग सना गच्छा में दमांग सना गच्छा में सांगांग सना गच्छा में का पाठ करते हुए जब जाते हैं इतने लोग देखने के लिए आते हैं जब सड़क पर तो बस जाते हैं सारा बस रुक जाता है सब बस के अंदर से लोग निकल के आता है देखने के लिए क्या हो रहा है तो ये हमारा पुराना एक संस्कार है इंडिया में जो पुराने जमाने में ये होता है तो वो संस्कार लोगों के दिमाग में अभी भी है तो इसको लोग बहुत श्रद्धा के देखते दे दे हैं ये काफी फायदेमंद रहा है रात को जब हम लोग बैठ के जब फंक्शन करते हैं मतलब टीचिंग करते हैं तो हजारों लोग जमा हो जाता हूं बुद्धिज्म वाज लॉस्ट फॉर मेनी सेंचुरीज इन द लैंड ऑफ इट्स ओरिजिन Discovery and identification of sacred footsteps of the Buddha and other Buddhist centers started only in the 19th century. Lama Lobzang had realized during his initial stages of exploration and assimilation of the Dhamma itself that Buddhism in India needed to be revitalized. Because of his connection with living Buddhist heritage, he was quick to realize that the Buddhist heritage sites needed to be transformed into living heritage sites. 
He felt that this was the only way to provide long-term benefits of the true teachings of the Buddha to the world at large. The Buddhist heritage is spread over a vast area of the Gangetic Plains, the areas of the sublime wanderings of the Buddha. He realized that for the revitalization process to succeed, the communities living in the vicinity of this heritage and especially the communities with Buddhist roots need to be sensitized and brought back into the fold of the Dhamma. Therefore, he has been running a movement and visiting different villages for this purpose. His efforts have been yielding the desired results and the communities with Buddhist roots are coming back into the fold of the Dhamma. इस गांव के लोगों का बहुत दिनों से एक डिमांड था कि लामा जी आएं और हम लोगों को दीक्षा दें धम्म के बारे में सत्य जो धम्म है वो उसके बारे में बताएं और हम लोगों को उस मार्ग पर चलने के लिए प्रेरित करें तो इसी संबंध में लामा जी वहां पर पहुंचे और एक बहुत जबरदस्त एक उत्साह देखा गया जब व्यक्ति को, कोई भी इंसान या कोई भी समूह जब पूरे मन से किसी चीज को स्वीकार करने के लिए तैयारी करता है तो जब लामा जी पहुंचते हैं तो धम्म का पूरा का पूरा वातावरण बनता है लामा जी जहां भी जाते हैं वह स्थान अपने आप धम्ममय हो जाता है गांव में लामा जी आए और लोगों के घरों में जा करके लोगों से संपर्क किया महिलाओं से छोटे छोटे बच्चों के साथ इंटरेक्ट किया उन्होंने और वो बहुत ही गाँव के लोगों ने इसका धम्म लाभ प्राप्त किया On the other side, Lama Ji has been visiting different villages with Buddhist heritage spread around these villages. At such villages, Lama Ji's presence has been generating much enthusiasm. The inhabitants of these villages are happy to show him the Buddhist heritage spread in the vicinity. Lama Ji has been continuously sensitizing the inhabitants of such villages about this heritage its importance and the need to transform this heritage into a living one namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa ye jo gufa hai ye itna pavitra sthan hai yahan par bhagwan buddh aaye kyunki hesang ke us virtan mein ye aata hai ki woh bhagwan buddh yahan par aaye is ke mein rahe to ye bahut bada pavitra sthan hai ye jhar ke main samajhta hu ki main bahut bhagyawan ki mujhe yahan par ye to ye तमाम हिंदुस्तान के जगह जगह कई जगह पर भगवान बुद्ध के अवशेष थे हेरिटेज साइट है ज्यादातर विलेज में गाँव में है गाँव वालों को हमें धन्यवाद देना चाहिए क्योंकि गाँव वालों ने उस विलेज में जितने भी भगवान बुद्ध के अवशेष भगवान बुद्ध की मूर्तियाँ जो जमीन के नीचे दब सब निकल कर के बाहर ला रहे हैं और रेस्पेक्टेड जगह पर अच्छे जगह पर रख रहा है ये बहुत प्रशंसनीय हमारे लिए है तमाम वर्ल्ड के सभी जो बुद्धिस्ट जो बुद्धिस्ट हैं उनको सामने आना चाहिए और ये हेरिटेज साइज को लिविंग हेरिटेज साइज बनाना चाहिए अभी हमारे जैसे पहले था लिविंग हेरिटेज है Following the Sangha approach, Ashoka Mission has been associated with like-minded organizations like the Samrat Ashok Club. 
This has been done to institutionalize the efforts of revitalization of Dhamma in the land of its birth and also to ensure the long-term sustainability of such noble efforts. Big functions like this one, attended by thousands of people who are now following the path of the Dhamma, are being organized from time to time to make the revitalization process as vibrant as possible. Lama Lobzang is an icon for these people. Right from the initial days, this great being has been meeting the prominent leaders of India to discuss the revitalization of Buddha Dhamma in the land of its origin and the revival of Buddhist heritage sites. He has also been traveling all over the world in order to facilitate international participation for revitalization of Buddhist heritage in India, which belongs to the entire world. His lifelong efforts culminated in the formation of an international Buddhist body called International Buddhist Confederation in 2011 with Lama Lobzang as its founding Secretary General. He was the one who made an immense contribution before IBC was set up. I think for about two years he went all over the world, he met all the supreme leaders of the Buddhist world and he brought them together on a common platform where the IBC was given birth. So that is a major, major contribution. Lama Ji inspired and you know played a very important role of bringing the Buddhist community together to the land of its origin in India. One of the major objectives of the Confederation was to give historically neglected sites a voice of strong global advocacy group with the motto, Collective Wisdom United Voice. The founding members conclave of the International Buddhist Confederation was a convergence of the world's Theravada, Mahayana and Vajrayana heavyweights from different parts of the Buddhist world. Our most venerable Lama Lobjangji has done a very great work to bring all the Buddhist organizations, institutions from all over the world, from more than 29 countries, under one platform called IBC. He has uh, made the people from different walks of life come together and also think how to reserve and promote the Buddhist cultural heritage available in different parts of India and convert this cultural heritage into a living Buddhist heritage. Another important aspect of Lama Lobzang is his exemplary service to the humanity for about five decades in the health sector. Of course, Sir Lama Ji has a lifelong contribution to health, the health sector. He has been helping patients since very young age for many decades now. Lama Lobzang is an inspiration. He works at the physical level, wherein despite his senior age, he spends time every day in the crowded aims to get the poor treated. <laughs> तो मेरे उम्र जितना लामा जी का उनसे ज्यादा उनका सर्वेस है अभी वो 88 88 साल के हैं अभी भी वो इतना काम करते हैं इतना काम करते हैं पेशेंट और गरीबों के लिए पूरा वो एम्स हॉस्पिटल रोज जाते हैं पेशेंट के साथ जाना आना उन डॉक्टर उनसे बात करना उनका जो बड़े से बड़ा सर्जरी हो सब संभव हो पाना he is doing a tremendous job uh, for the, uh, you know, for these uh, patients of the Ladakhi because even uh, even you ask a simple kid, any of the irrespective of any religions, irrespective of the any age, you will just ask who is Lama Lama. Everybody knows he is the Lama Lama is the one who takes care of the patients in Ladakh. So it's his image in the Ladakh. So from myself, yeah, he is a very uh, you know self-dedicated and is a uh, very generous person and uh, uh, helping to these people of the uh, Ladakh uh, in different ways. Yes, he's, he's a legend. He has touched the lives of the, the people of the entire Himalayan and particularly the entire Ladakh. Even anyone who is getting sick, who needs an urgent 
treatment in Delhi uh, are being taken to Delhi. Other than his service at the physical level, Lama Lobzang works on the mental and spiritual level as well. Buddhism teaches that karma is created through thoughts, words and actions. And he is doing all three. He is the finest example of having actualized this principle in his life and inspires others to do the same. He has taken concrete actions to arrange for the comfortable stay of patients at Ashoka Mission. He is an embodiment of the great living heritage of Dhamma, which teaches that the fundamental purpose of life is to strive for the happiness of others. Stenzin Angmo, a young girl from a village in Ladakh, has been staying at Ashoka Mission for many years to take treatment at Ames for her multiple problems. मैं 2008 से यहाँ पे दिल्ली में ट्रीटमेंट कर रही हूँ और स्टार्टिंग में मुझे काफी बीपी का प्रॉब्लम था और उस उसके इलावा मुझे यूरिन प्रोटीन में काफी यूरिन आ रहे थे तो मेरे काफी फीट स्वेलिंग हो गया था एंड फेस पे काफी रेशिस हो गए थे तो इस वजह से ले में काफी पहले ट्रीटमेंट हुआ था पर वहाँ पे उन्होंने मुझे बोला कि दिल्ली रेफर करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि ये किडनी का कोई प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है जब मेरा बायोप्सी यहाँ पे हुआ तो उसमें मेरा डायग्नोस निकला एसएलई एसएलई और सिस्टमिक लूपस एरिथोमेटोसिस इस एन ऑटोइम्यून डिजीज in which the body's immune system mistakenly attacks the healthy tissue in many parts of the body. In my case, it was that my kidney was damaged. Then, the doctor told me that you have a lot of problems in your body. So, that's why I have to do this treatment. So, it's a very long treatment for this. Actually, I take medicine from steroids in 2008 for my SLE treatment. I have to take it for my patients. तो वो लेने की वजह से मुझे 2012 में हिप में मुझे प्रॉब्लम हो गया। She had to go in for hip replacement in 2015, where both her hips were replaced. Thereafter, her kidney transplant took place this year. Help to patients is being extended without any discrimination. A case in point is Haji Abdullah Bhatt whose life has changed after support and help was extended to him for his knee joint replacement. I was in the village of Guruji. 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 Taking treatment at Delhi, and that too in an institution like Ames is a costly affair. And this is one of the reasons for Lama Lubzang to start the initiative of free medical camps at Ladakh. This year, 175 different types of surgical procedures were conducted and 2,728 patients were examined in the OPDs during the free medical camp at Leh in the last week of September. So these camps are being conducted at least once in a year with uh, super specialties, uh, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgeries, gynecologies and um, all kinds of surgeries, most of the surgeries, even cardiac surgeries. And these are wonderful opportunities because uh, we also get to learn a lot from uh, super specialty doctors. Secondly, our patients get uh, a lot of benefit. As much as possible, these uh, surgeries are done here, like uh, knee replacement surgeries are being done every year almost, mm, since few years. And the cardiac surgeries like PDA closures and uh, a few surgeries are done here in our setup. And um, third and uh, more importantly, uh, we come to know, we get in touch with the doctors, they refer the patient to uh, Ames and other hospitals in Delhi, so we get a, uh, admission there very easily because of the referral of the doctors. These camps have proven to be a boon, especially for the poor and needy. I may have gone there to treat patients, but I thought I treated myself. I came back feeling cleansed. If you can understand what I mean, Absolutely. you know, it was it was a sort of a soul stirring experience with nothing earth shattering happening there. It's just landing there and 
you won't believe it you can check this with lama ji i mean to me he is a he is an incarnation of the god you know i believe that god can't come in human forms so he probably comes you know in little little of his self will come in people around us and he is one such person i think this has happened this has started this is running and this will run only because of him medical initiative of ashoka mission in the shape of medical camps in ladakh is not only serving the humanity but is also aimed at protecting and preserving the buddhist heritage of ladakh now to take this initiative to the next level lama lopsang wants to have a high tech diagnostic van this van will travel to all the rural areas of ladakh in order to detect and diagnose various critical elements like cancer this will save the lives of many people living in a very difficult terrain which is not happening now due to late detection and treatment his uh, contribution towards buddhism has been tremendous from various angles which makes him a very special person a very unique monk who in totality follows the path of buddha we can say that this is he's totally in line in the path of bodhisattvas inka jo pura jeevan hai uski jo yatra hai jeevan ki yatra सब लोगों के लिए अनुकरणीय हो सकती है इनकी यात्रा और इनके जो अनुभव रहे हैं तो उन सभी चीज़ों को अगर लिपिबद्ध किया जाए तो लोगों तक पात पहुंच सकती है जितना सम्मान के पात्र हैं उतना सम्मान इनको मिला नहीं है सम्मान और आगे सोसाइटी की ओर से भी और शासन प्रशासन सरकार की ओर से भी इनको मिलना चाहिए इसके लिए सबसे अधिक उपयुक्त पात्र लामालूम जंग साहब है you know people doing something they do maybe this much and the recognition is this much now here is a person is probably his contribution can run into volumes and he's not bothered about who's recognizing his work i mean very few people actually know in the rest of the country what he's doing i know ladakh and that region is just sign qua non to lama ji The living heritage that Lama Lobsang talks about is not just about places, rituals and structures, but the heritage of selflessly dedicating one's life for the good of all living beings. The heritage of staking life for the preservation of this tradition where every person is cherished and valued, where not a single individual is left behind. He has shown through his life that this is how one practices the dhamma. Lama Lobsang has accomplished so much in his life. He is touching 89 but still exudes youthful energy and plans to continue his noble endeavors. To promote dhamma, venerable Lama Lobsang plans to bring all the Buddhist traditions under one umbrella and proposes to organize a global buddhist congregation in future let us all join this great monk in his noble mission which is for the benefit happiness and harmony of all living beings to lo ran to go chen chen Tayang di